set my alarm. John! Ugh. That stupid, lazy, worthless piece of crap! Why do I always have to put up with this bull crap? Why? For once, I would like to not have to deal with this moron. Just once, and I would be the happiest person on earth. But I can't do that because he never leaves me alone! <sighs> that does it. I've had it up to here with him. I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. Hey, stupid! It's me, Joe! Answer your phone! Quit ignoring me, John! I've had it up to here with your pranks, man. If I have to live through one more day of it, I'm gonna kill myself if I don't get to you first. <laughs> you know what, man? You better hope to God I don't find you, because you're gonna get it if I do. <laughs> You seen John anywhere? Nah, man. Sorry, not as of late, man. <laughs> hey, have you seen John? Holy crap, dude! You woke me up just to ask me about that fool. No, I haven't seen him, and thank God for it. Hey, have you seen your goofball boyfriend? Um, no, but I'll see him later in a day. Do you need something? Is that him on the phone? No. Yeah, right. Hey, dork, is that you? Joe, what's wrong with you? Get out of here! John! 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 What the heck, John? This is John. Leave your hate mail. John? Is everything all right? Are you okay? Are you sure you haven't seen John? John? Nah, man. Honestly, I don't even remember what he looks like. Are you sure you haven't seen John? Dude! Can't you see I'm trying to sleep? No, I haven't seen John. Now get the heck out of here! Hey. 
Are you sure you haven't seen your boyfriend? No, and I hope I never see that idiot again. He completely forgot about our date. If you see him, tell him it's over. John! 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 Hey, Joe. What? No, 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 wait. You mean you've been there the whole time? Yup. No, no, that, that doesn't make sense. How could you possibly be there? How could any of this possibly be here and I didn't notice it? Because you're an actor, dude. Number one rule. You cannot look at the camera or the cameraman. And it's just a perfect, perfect place to prank you. <laughs> How are you there, dude?
It never ceases to amaze me how much we truly repress Like a butterfly floating out of dream state and back into my body I remember things I've tried to forget The distress too much to recollect And yet there's no hiding from the truth bringer that is my consciousness The stress of realizing past choices must be met With acceptance that I'm infinite The time that I spent something back I'll never get Living as though I'm being pulled towards an end goal Yet it could be that selfish motives are the only thing pushing me forward Chasing the American dream, I've encountered the nightmarish reality That human beings need the company of loved ones to make of this life something worth reveling Years spent in isolation, faced only with the company of my own reflection The thought of time spent without them, sinking me further into depression Can't help but regret when, I left them knowing full well The only way I'll make up lost time, is if I truly spend an eternity in heaven with them May God have mercy on us all Days in sleepless plights, yo Getting through the strife of life by listening to Northside Nights Reminiscing about days when sunsets would rise And we ride, cause you know that's when the city sheet comes alive Not a care in the world, just getting by Head blown by the only girl, trust with my mind Flying by the rhythm of nature, cause she got me right Fading in and out, daydreaming about past lives Before my eyes unfurls the scenic drive Into the night sky, projecting memories of home up on the mountainside Not a clue that years later we be surprised when the news come through the grapevine that it come time for you to be light into the ground beside body giving rise to spirit while tears fall from your mama's eyes but despise with the future hell we embrace the moment knowing all was well looking back it all seems like one long dream in this current scene in this movie of a lot from our teens crossing borders looking clean with a steam to get in the scenes of ladies dolled up like they believe so succinct but we in our life's approach nothing serious everyday coast for life becomes more and more complex and reaches the inevitable end. Yeah. Your story is getting more and more complicated. Your story is getting more and more involved. Your story, the story of the world that you live in, this this work of imagination that whoever the fuck is hearing this has created. And each one of us has created our own little version of it. And they're all intertwined. They say when you die your life flash before your eyes knowing that I ask why would I want to get by being an asshole and not make the best out my time with family friends I stand to possibly never see again. Kick your guard, say why treasure something that we're born into crying and leave screaming eyes why would you want the final movie that you see? A culmination of your memories to be anything less than harmony. I hear you hollering YOLO with a travesty and fuck the Buddha, man. I don't consider reincarnation a disaster piece. Perhaps it be that the reason we leave screaming is out of existential joy. As the voyage of life continues, I'm reborn, crying tears of a boy. Overcome with joy at the profundity of the realization that I've been given a chance to enjoy the beauty of life again. So, so, journey through motherfucking natural plane. Damn. This whole thing might be someone's imagination. It might be your imagination. It might be my imagination, it might be a combination of everyone's imagination. I mean, things are real. They, there's real laws to this life. Yeah. It's weird, but it, God damn it, operates like a work of fiction. It might be a part of your own imagination. It might, you, you might be creating your thing with your imagination as I create mine with mine, and they intertwine. It
It's just my brother cruising, I'm perusing by Drove smoke, got us navigating through a lucid high And we just cruising by the guise of the street lights Listening to hustler's music when nostalgically I start to think, damn I miss home When a scientist on home time traveling Send my ass home to the future where I belong When I realize that at any given moment I'm exactly where I should have been All alone for in this dream we deal reality The only certainty is the absurdity That we're alive and breathing, circling Space manifestation of close city But nobody noticing that there's a way to eternity so quickly That we hardly had time to give our lives meaning Fuck that, never mean till I spend my last breath I'ma be a human being trying to figure out what being human means Time to die, hope to first ascend Mother Earth's mountains way up high The stargazing, my ancestors now living up In Father Sky's warm embrace The circle of life continues as the human race Was born of the fate of a star that exploded Under the weight of having his weight To see his children living out their dreams Not in lament of us and how quick the sun sets They came and went Why do we mistreat each other? When we are all the same. I am a mother. I am a father. I am a son. I am a brother. I am a sister. Not always will we be related. Often separated. By religion. By class. By sex. But we are all the same. Separated by superficial differences. Differences? Make us forget. Forget how to love. Forget to show empathy. And to genuinely care. We need to reunite. Stop the hate. Forget the stereotype. Embrace life. Learn to love. 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 And understand each other. I'm going to start with you, Stephen. Uh, tell me a little bit about the roles that you played in these short films, and what was it like to play those roles? I mean, it was, it was great. Uh, the roles that I played were, um, played a guy named Jerome. He was a troubled guy who lived in a kind of bad environment. So, I mean, in the story, they kind of, everybody, all the characters in the story, we're kind of like helping out another character in the story, so that's kind of like the message that it was kind of sent. So I mean, to play in that one, uh, it was pretty uh, relatable, I would say. Um, the other uh, film that we shot, I played like a supporting role of somebody who was just, you know, reading a newspaper, and it was uh, kind of going off of the main uh, major character, the major role. In the, in the story, but um, it was a very fun um, learning experience. Um, don't get to act so much, so it was pretty cool. Sergio, we're gonna come to you next. Um, I noticed you really took a liking to directing, but you also seem to be very comfortable in all the major production roles. So can you talk a little bit about what it takes to be a director? Well, 
I mean, first of all, what it takes to be a director, I think the main thing is being able to work with everybody, you know, because if you can't, you know, work with a certain person, you know, your project's going to fail, you know, and I think that being able to be open to ideas and, you know, to relate to people and, you know, to admit when you're wrong and stuff like that, that's probably the best thing, like, when it comes to directing, because, I mean, other than that, you've seen a lot of people, like, people fail in projects, or, why did that movie come out? It's like, oh, well, the director and the writers, and, you know, they just couldn't get the story straight, or they couldn't get it along, so, I mean, that's one of the things that I was able to do, because, I mean, I, I mean, I've grown up, I'm 27 now, and, you know, I've dealt with problems myself, personal problems, and I've been able to deal with them by myself, and, you know, I guess that's what helped me a lot in directing this and helping with you guys. I mean, I barely met you guys, and yeah, it's been a learning experience. Isaac, our actor, our thespian, <laughs> um, but not only that, you also had an idea that you brought to the class that you called mm -hmm. sort of the butterfly effect. Um, it was the impetus for the film, Just Help. Can you tell us a little bit about how you came up with that idea? and how what, what inspired you well the crazy thing about it is just like i've always liked the concept of having multiple characters who not necessarily know each other but are connected in some way and like they have their own story their own origin story their own what who they are but somehow they are all connected whether it be like one person knowing the other or the other person knowing another i just like that concept um I mean, there's been a few shows and movies that have influenced like that, like the whole butterfly effect. Um, like the flap of a butterfly can cause anything, and um, it was just an idea. I just wanted something that had that effect. I mean, most of my classmates here, like we did, they just branched off like, "Oh, hey, I can be this or I can be that," which was great though, because everyone caught on to what I wanted to do. Um, so it was great to show everybody that whole butterfly effect or how it worked. Can you describe what the butterfly effect is in the movie that you, that we all shot just helped? Like, um, what happened? What do we see happening? We see we see everyone's backstory. We see how like they're struggling and how like life isn't necessarily going right, but it just takes that one act of kindness that blossoms each character. So it, it's like a strand of flowers just slowly blooming, and it, it portrays really beautifully because at the end you see everything. You see the whole. Um, flower just blossom. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, Daisy, you <coughs> mostly were our sound person, and a lot of it has to do with your experience with EPCC radio. Um, so it seems like that's your wheelhouse. Um, so tell us a little bit about, I mean, one, we know that sound is one of the most important roles in filmmaking. So what skills do, do you feel that you brought to this process? that helped to create successful sound? Well, for a start, well, for the radio, being part of the radio didn't really had a lot of impact because for that, I don't really manage a lot of sound. I do more of the, um, I manage the people, like controlling the schedules and everything, so I don't really manage a lot of audio. But I do have experience and I brought some skills because I had a previous class from audio production. So before that, I had an interest, in, uh, an interest in music, uh, and how, like, it's just different, and how sound it's really something that always makes an impact. It always changes. Uh, so the professor that I had for that class, I remember that he really made an impact on me because he was like, it doesn't really matter. Well, it may matter that the image is has quality but as long as you have really good sound it the the image can be like whatever but if you have really good sound then people it's just gonna roll with it so you start differentiating where there's a car where there's a, like someone yelling there's a dog how far from you they are and then whenever you bring that inside of the studio you know where everyone is located even if you're not recording if you have the boom pole, you know where where everyone is, and you can always like use that 
to know if someone wants to shoot something and you know it's going to be loud, you can have the boom pole like further uh, on the person and you, or you can even be at some certain distance. So yeah, that's what I think I brought here. Great. Okay. Thank you. And last but not least, Erin. Um, you have like a magic pen at home because you have a fountain of ideas that you're always bringing to the table. So in regard to writing and storytelling, how do you collect these ideas and how do you know when to access those ideas? Um, for me, it's usually like a step process. There's no, like I don't have a light bulb that goes off, hey, story, um, beginning, middle, end. It, it never happens all at once. It usually starts off with like, the smallest inspiration, like I can think of a character from a picture or <clears throat> like a revenge story from a song, that's what happened recently, or an adventure from like a painting of the wilderness. At least the basis of it, and then as time comes on, I'll like add stuff to it, see what works, see what doesn't. Uh, even then sometimes I'll like watch stuff from like other movies and say, well, you know, what if this was like that, or what if this was the other way around? So for me, it's playing with ideas to see what could happen. And if I get an idea that I really like, I'll try and flesh it out, I'll spread it out some. And if it turns out that I'm not getting anything from it, I'll toss it in the trash. So that's how I do it. Great, thank you. So last question, this is for all of you, and you know we can take turns, but how was it working with each other in such a short amount of time, under such pressure to meet deadlines and to produce so much work? Uh, what was that like to, to work with one another? Do you want to start, Steven? Uh, yeah, it was a great experience. Um, like I said before, it was a learning experience. Um, great people. I mean, I mean, I'm just grateful to have, I mean, to, to meet good people in, in the field that you're interested in, you know, and I'm just grateful to be in the, to, to, to have the opportunity to work with the equipment that we get to work with here. Um, you don't get to touch a thousand dollar camera too often or see a control room or I mean even if it comes down to like even the simplest editing you know you don't get to do that on the Macs and stuff the nice computers they have so I mean this whole couple of weeks that we had together was I mean very very uh, a learning experience I mean the, that's the best way I could sum it up like I, I, I'm gonna take this class with me like everywhere I go from this point on because the stuff that I learned here, touching certain equipment, it just, it's like muscle memory and it, it's just, it's really nice. I really liked it a lot. Thank you. Huh. Um, a little bit sad to actually have it to end so soon, you know, I, I kind of enrolled with the intention that, you know what, I mean, I just need to finish already, like, you know, <laughs> I need to get things done, you know. We all did it back then. Yeah, and it was just, well, now I'm like, well, what if I would have taken it in the fall? It kind of would have like expanded, like you know, into a couple more months. But now I'm, I'm actually grateful for it. It's, it was fun. It's interesting, and you know what? I know I'm gonna be able to do it like in my own terms now because I'm not gonna necessarily be meeting a deadline or doing it for an assignment. But later, hopefully, it will be making me an income. You know, so I'm, I'm grateful for all of that. How about you, Isaac? Well. I don't know, it was really fun because, like, I, I, I was shocked at the size of the class because I guess I was expecting, like, previous year that we'd have, like, like, a good, you know, 10 students or whatever. When I walked in, I was like, oh, wow, it's just us, like, um, which was great, though, because, like, it, you learn how people work on a personal level. So, like, I already knew Daisy because um, we took a previous class together. And so, like, finding out that she had this class, you know, I was like, oh, okay, at least I know somebody. And then from then on, it's like, you know, it's okay that I can talk to you guys just because it's just us, you know. It's not like a whole class that we have to worry about. Like, we have to worry about each other and meeting these deadlines. And I think we did a good job meeting those deadlines. Definitely. You guys were a great team. How about you, Daisy? Um, well, I already knew two people, so it's a Steven and I, I said. But, <clears throat> I mean, working for communication, like, as I've always seen it, when you have, like, a mask on, like one that's just that for that. It's just people that is always willing to collaborate with people. So it's not like if you have a history class and no one knows each other, and you have a good luck if you know someone or if you meet them. 
but when it's mass comm class you get to actually talk to them and they are willing to always talk back to you they're like so and since we were just five people i was like we're gonna end up just like being very close to each other and so we get along really cool so okay. thank you <laughs> i'm happy you guys liked the number one rule script <laughs> i'm really happy about that um it was fun writing for all of you um i didn't write everything thank god um, but when I wrote the number one rule, I wasn't expecting that kind of feedback. I thought it was just like a basic script, and I was thinking, wow, this is really good. Um, I also liked writing for some of you guys, like, because I wrote out James for you, which was fun, and I ended up writing up Jesse by accident, so I thought, uh, you know, I should, just, I should probably just take that role. I got it bored anyways. Other than that, um, I liked the mass communication discipline because I was able to like experience it all. That way I can hone in what should I do. And right now it's down to like writing or acting. So you guys think I excel in that. But the main reason why I really wanted to get into films, to be perfectly honest, it was because of the crew. Like to me that's the funnest part about making a film. Because we've always had even now when we were making the films, we had laughs. <laughs> we still do actually. Um and I really like that. And what made me like that so much was watching like Firefly documentaries. I mean, when you look at the way they interact, it was even like makeup people with the main actors, and you think, wow, that's a crew. I want to be in that. I want to experience that. Um, and yeah, they did it because, like, they tried to do it. Like, I think one game they played was, okay, we're learning everybody's names. Tim, Jerry, okay, I'm winning. And they did it <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, we didn't do anything like that, of course, but it was like three or four weeks right now, so, and we're kind of at that level. I mean, with Sergio, it's it's really cool because he knows the equipment really well, and he can like fix a problem, or he can make a problem less difficult, and that's great to have. I've already known Steven a while back, and he's great to talk to. He's great company. Daisy's cool because she's got a good attitude. Like even when she like, um, I don't know if she wants me to tell you this, but she like took a slam at one point on the board, <laughs> and she got back up laughing about it. it was like, wow, that's cool. And Isaac's always a ball of energy. He's always good to have around for like a laugh and whatnot. Um, and that's really cool, because like, that was the main reason why I really, really wanted to get into filmmaking. It wasn't really for the acting or the experience, like part of it, but to have a crew like that, I think that's the best part of filmmaking. Mass comms on three. One, two, three. Mass comms! <laughs>